Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture on Australopithecus, uh, let us discuss the postcranial features of Australopithecus. Postcranial, that means all the important anatomical features found uh, beneath the head. By all probability, Australopithecus were bipedal. The savanna like vegetation in which they lived forced them to walk on the ground. Earlier, earth was gripped by, or not gripped by actually, a rainforest like vegetation prevailed in most of the uh, tropical as well as subtropical regions. So, in a rainforest, we know about the canopy, multi layered canopy, thick undergrowth and uh, even at the ground level there will be two to uh, one to two feet of uh, decomposing foliage so trees will be found in multi-layered canopy okay different layers of trees very dense at the same time there will be large scale uh, uh, defoliated leaves here and there will be no much time for the leaves to decompose. Even before the leaves decompose, there will be defoliation. So always uh, there will be some one to two feet layer of decomposing foliage. And reptiles will survive so comfortably, the snakes will be there. It will be very difficult for animals to move on the surface. So prior to Australopithecus, when such an environment prevailed, most of our ancestors were strictly terrestrial, strictly arboreal. So that means they were forced to live on the tree branches. And also there was a change in environment. This rainforest type of vegetation was replaced by a savanna type of forest. In a savanna type of forest, trees will be there, but trees will be scattered here and there. That means there will be no continuous stretch of uh, dense vegetation, dense trees. And we know savanna lands are grasslands. So because of this change in the environment, Australopithecus were forced to climb down from the trees, move down from the trees. And this new environment forced them to walk on the ground. At the same time, they need to spot the carnivores. So every time they need to climb. And it is this right which gave Australopithecus the bipedal locomotion. And almost a semi-erect posture. Bipedal locomotion. So by all probability, Australopithecus were bipedal. And uh, the savanna like vegetation in which they lived forced them to walk on ground. So apart from this, uh, there are number of anatomical evidences which again suggest that Australopithecus were bipedal. These are more centrally placed foramen magna. Earlier we have discussed by foramen. We refer to a opening in a brine. We discussed about foramen magnum earlier. So foramen magnum is here. This is the opening through which brine further continues as the spinal cord. There are also other foramen like we have this jugular foramen here through which the jugular vein passes. But that doesn't uh, have any evolutionary significance. But the position of foramen magnum here it implies a number of evolutionary significance. It has evolutionary significance. Because when the human ancestors were quadrupedal, quadrupedal means walking on four legs. The foramen magnum is more posteriorly placed. And uh, uh, the vertebral column used to be single arched like this single arch to vertebral column. But slowly in the process when we got erect posture, 
and it didn't happen overnight it took few million years for the human ancestors to get the erect posture from quadrupedal slowly slowly gradually 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 and finally we got uh, this erect posture it took few million years and in this process the foramen magnum slowly declined 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 and finally it reached this particular position even for australopithecus the foramen magnum is more centrally placed it implies that australopithecus had an erect posture and a bipedal locomotion this is one first very important evidence the next stop is the presence of curve in the lumbar region see as i told you when uh, the human ancestors had uh, uh, quadrupedal locomotion foramen magnum was more posteriorly placed and vertebral column used to have only one arch only one arch in the course of evolution when we got erect posture this foramen magnum declined and it became more centrally placed and when it is centrally placed and if the vertebral column continue to remain like this it cannot bear the body weight and uh, some weakness may develop here and maybe in the course of time the bone may crumble or bone may break at some places to prevent that in the course of evolution our vertebral column became multiple arched so that the weight can be balanced at many places it can be balanced to here it can be balanced to here and it provides some sort of a stability and strength to the backbone so the multiple arched vertebral column is called as anticlinal vertebra anticlinal vertebral column what is that anticline so in geography you might have read about the uh, fold mountains himalayas is an example for fold mountains so in your fold mountains the upstanding portions are called as anticline and the low lying portion is called as a syncline just because like this we also have a fold in the vertebral column this multiple folded vertebral column is named as anticlinal vertebra so though human beings have a perfect curvature in the vertebral column that is not the case with australopithecus because the evolution was still operating on the species and the vertebral column was not perfectly arched like this so the vertebral column right the topmost portion this is called as a, a cervical region we have what uh, close to around we have seven plates here that individual bone plate like bone then uh, this is the thoracic region and the last five one right the five plates uh, these are called as lumbar plates or the lumbar region where we have five plates we call it as l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 below this lies uh, uh, this sacrum or sacral bone there is no need to worry about this cervical thoracic and the sacral region because uh, we won't deal much about this thing but try to remember this lumbar region alone at least so among australopithecus though there is no perfect curvature but uh, the backbone or the vertebral column shows uh, some sort of curvature in the lumbar region alone in the lumbar region alone there is a curvature it shows that uh, australopithecus is evolving to reach a perfect uh, erect posture so australopithecus though it was bipedal it didn't have a perfect erect posture but the evidence for bipedal locomotion is uh, yes though the vertebral column is not perfectly arched 
there is a curve in the lumbar region of uh, the bone of australopithecus lumbar region of the vertebral column of australopithecus then next uh, uh, presence of torsion angle of uh, for the femur bone torsion angle see here this bone the way in which this bone is attached this angle right we call it as the torsion angle this bone is not straight like this had the bone be straight like that then the entire body weight right will straight away fall on the knees and that will put lot of pressure on the knees to prevent that there is an angle here this angle is called as torsion angle of the femur bone it is again a weight bearing modification it may act like a spring when there is more weight right up this bone can uh, uh, twist something to some extent so that it can bear the body weight so it is one way to prevent the excessive body weight from falling on the knees because knees need to be very stable correct so but though there is a curvature in the torsion angle knees are straight they are straight knees okay but torsion angle is present in the femur bone <coughs> so the presence of torsion angle again is an uh, indication to show that australopithecus had a bipedal locomotion <coughs> then <coughs> bowl shape bowl shape of the pelvis see uh, for animals with quadrupedal locomotion pelvis used to be plate like so as i told you when the animals had a quadrupedal locomotion the pelvis used to be plate like So because uh, the function of the pelvis is uh, to hold the organs in the stomach to give some stability to the organs in the stomach intestine liver etc and once when uh, the same <coughs> organism in the course of evolution if it gets erect posture and the pelvis further continue to remain plate like it will not serve any purpose it will be vertical so in the course of evolution pelvis became bowl shaped and even australopithecus had a bowl shaped pelvis this is a very good example to show that australopithecus had a bipedal locomotion okay fine so next is Uh, presence of linear aspera this linear aspera is present only in the hind limbs so linear aspera right this refers to a small groove this is the uh, a groove developed in uh, the posterior side of a femur bone posterior side of the femur bone femur bone is there in the thigh region you know this and this is the largest bone of the human body fine um, what is the need for the femur to develop for these groups this actually provided attachment areas attachment surfaces for the muscles in the thigh region when the human ancestors had a uh, quadrupedal locomotion the entire body weight was balanced by the four limbs both forearms and hind limbs and when they got erect posture now just two limbs are going to balance the entire body weight at the same time in the course of evolution right up even our uh, human ancestors became larger and larger when compared to australopithecus homo habilis a bit larger when compared to homo habilis 
Homo erectus were slightly larger. And we human beings are larger than Homo erectus. Okay, fine. So now just two limbs or hind limbs are going to manage the entire body weight. To maintain this body weight or to manage the body weight, to balance the body weight, some extra muscles develop in the abdominal region, in the back, in the thighs, etc. So there is a need to have some extra attachment areas for the new muscles. So this linear aspera developed in the femur bone mainly to provide attachment area for the muscles in the thigh region. That's why we know right there is a huge difference between our, the muscles in our forearms and the muscles in our legs. We have too much of muscles in the abdomen and the thigh region. For these muscles to get attached in the femur bone, there is a need to have more attachment areas. So in the course of evolution, when from quadrupedal to bipedal, new muscles develop and to attach these muscles and for these muscles to get attached, this linea aspera developed. So the presence of linea aspera in the femur bone again indicates an erect posture and bipedal locomotion. Then finally, right, our entire body weight will come and straight away it will come and fall on our ankle. If our entire body weight is come, made to come and fall in this region, how long this region can bear our body weight? The bones there may break or it may become weak. From 60, 70, 80 kg, right? If it's straight away, it falls on this one particular bone. That bone cannot bear that weight for a long time. So there were a number of anatomical modifications which happened in the feet and in the ankle so that our body weight will not be made to fall in a one particular place but it will be made to radiate into our entire feet our weight load it runs like this from here the weight load runs like this goes down and it ends somewhere between or the greater toe and the second finger. See, you can see number of examples here. The most important is the arching of the feet bones. Arching of the feet bones. This is a very important weight bearing modification. So for some people right, even now this arching may not be proper, so they may have flat foot. If somebody is having flat foot, that is a disqualification for uniform services like uh, Indian Police Service, Indian Revenue Service, Customs and Excise, uh, etc. Okay. So even for Australopithecus, they had a number of modifications here, like the arching of the feet and how the weight load gets radiated into uh, the feet. And all these modifications are found only in the hind limbs. On forearms, the wrist and the bones were as usual. No much change here. Again, this symbolizes Australopithecus had an erect posture and bipedal locomotion. Got it? So these are the anatomical evidences to suggest that Australopithecus had a bipedal locomotion. The first important thing is foramen magnum is more centrally placed. Then there is a curve in the lumbar region of the backbone. Pelvis is bowl shaped. Linea aspera is present in the femur bone. Once again, torsion angle is also found in the femur bone. Knees are straight. And there are number of weight bearing modification in the feet and in the ankle. And these modifications are found only in the hind limbs. This suggests very clearly that Australopithecus were bipedal and uh, they had uh, an erect or semi erect posture. One thing for sure is their forearms were free, they didn't use their forearms for locomotion. So, though Australopithecus had uh, a bipedal locomotion, 
the bipedal locomotion of uh, australopithecus is not like that of uh, human bipedal locomotion uh, there is a difference actually this is largely because of the absence of uh, these muscles most importantly this gluteus medius and uh, gluteus maximus this muscle is uh, gluteus maximus and uh, this is gluteus medius and we also have gluteus minimus uh, which will be behind uh, this muscle so these are uh, the muscles which actually stabilize our pelvis uh, when we walk the muscles found in the back it is because of these muscles right we can st stand straight we can walk casually but for australopithecus these muscles were totally absent and one more thing uh, the istrial tuberosity or the istrium bone this is that istrium bone the one in the green color this bone generally it used to be very long for the animals with the quadrupedal locomotion but for australopithecus this bone still remained very large as a result australopithecus had a jog trot like uh, locomotion so jog trot means uh, they cannot stand straight and they cannot uh, walk like human beings they'll be standing with uh, bent knees and bent hip and they cannot walk continuously they were capable of making only some quick short steps maybe some four step five step at a time tuck 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 some five step then they need to stand take a breath then walk so this type of locomotion is physiologically inefficient because this consumes large amount of energy so they need to eat a lot because for walking right it consumes a lot of energy lot of energy okay fine so are you comfortable with this now as i told you there are a number of anatomical as well as ecological evidences to show that australopithecus were bipedal but the bipedal locomotion of australopithecus is different from the tough the locomotion of human beings largely because of the absence of two muscles gluteus medius and gluteus maximus and the presence of a large istrium bone as a result australopithecus had a jog trot like locomotion thank you